You know what's funny? WrestleMania is two weeks away. And it doesn't feel like it. It feels like we're months away from WWE WrestleMania. Tonight's Raw felt like a Road to WrestleMania show that if it happened, I don't know, let's say like two weeks ago, this would be actually a pretty good episode. But we're like two weeks away from WrestleMania, and it just doesn't feel like it. It just doesn't feel like the shows of shows is coming up soon. There was only one moment of this whole episode where it felt like, oh crap, WrestleMania is coming soon. And that was the end. We had to sit through about two hours of garbage. Three hours of garbage, I should say, to get a good three to four minute ending. Holy crap. Welcome to my Monday Night Raw review. Leave it to the WWE to give a useless feud more time than it should be getting. Holy shnikes. The Divas match went on for 10 minutes. It was a good match. No, it wasn't. Because you don't care about this feud. What is this match between Nikki Bella and AJ Lee doing to help advance the feud whatsoever? It is doing absolutely nothing. There's been times in the past where I've said with male superstars that the WWE has wasted my time with this match on television. Well, I'm saying it with the Divas. I don't care if it's against the grain right now. I don't care about this hashtag give Divas a chance nonsense. This was a waste of my time. I don't need to see Nikki and AJ wrestle for 10 minutes. I don't care about their characters, and I don't care about their match at WrestleMania. See what happens to the tag team division when your best tag team goes down? This crap. Oh, God. Damn. Uh, get well soon, Jey Uso. I hope your shoulder shit injury is not too damn serious because we need the Usos in the tag team division. I, I never thought I'd be like, oh, my God, I miss the Usos super duper much. But after tonight... Oh my god, I miss the Usos super duper much. Uh, Ken and Cesaro are going to waste their times with the likes of Primo and Epico and the New Day. Oh god, this tag team division is just trash. Oh god, John Cena feuds, gotta love them and all their stupidity. Jesus fucking Christ. So after last week where we saw Cena beat the shit out of Rusev to get his U.S. title match, now we have to make it official. It has to be a contract signing. And so for whatever dumb dick reason, Rusev's like, screw Lana, I'm going to bring in this Russian lawyer with me. And this lawyer is going to fight against John Cena and tell John Cena, no, Rusev is not fighting at WrestleMania. But at the end of the day, at the end of the segment, pretty much Rusev's lawyer signs a contract. So, what was the point of this segment? Is, is it because John Cena didn't feel like wrestling tonight? Is John Cena just told the guys in the back, Yeah, guys, uh, I don't feel like wrestling tonight, so can I just have a promo segment with Rusev? This promo segment was useless. It didn't build any animosity to this Cena and Rusev feud. It just felt like a waste of time. Why bring in this lawyer and have the lawyer the whole promo talk about, Oh, John, he's not going to sign the contract. My client Rusev's not going to sign the contract, but he signs the contract anyways. Waste of time. I seriously don't understand why WWE didn't have Brock Lesnar cut these UFC-style promos, you know, earlier in his WWE tenure as WWE champion, or at least throughout it. I mean, let's just face it. I'll say it. Brock Lesnar can cut a mean promo when he's sitting down and doing a UFC-style interview. Is the problem is, is when he's in front of a bunch of people, but you get him inside that dark room and he's cutting a UFC-style promo, you can feel it. You feel intense about it. You can almost hate the guy a little bit more because he comes off as of such a douchebag in those videos. It is just great stuff. So why didn't the WWE do more of these as he was champion? No, you know what the WWE does instead? They send out Paul Heyman, who the fans are going to cheer for. Paul Heyman repeats the same crap. Over and over again, my client Brock Lesnar is going to destroy whoever he is facing. Because he is the beast, Brock Lesnar. And then you just have Paul Heyman say the same shit. And it gets annoying and repetitive. And you know, a bunch of people who love Paul Heyman are just jerking off to it. Saying, oh, this is the greatest promo ever. Uh, way, way to waste, you know, one of the best strong suits that you have as Brock Lesnar. Way to waste Brock Lesnar as the ultimate badass. Instead of having the badass speak most of the time, you have his freaking manager speak most of the time. And, and then it makes it worse because you make cockfist. <laughs> Look like a complete idiot. 
Oh, what? Cockfist cannot say, I can, I will. We have to put on his t-shirt now. So, 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 Cockfist <laughs> can't even cut. That's how much you don't believe in this guy. You, the WWE, made a t-shirt for him that says, I can, I will. You, you can't just have Cockpit say that to, to Paul Heyman. No, we have to make a t-shirt for it. I can, I will. Oh. And it's been like, how long? And now we're finally going to get Cockpit and Brock Lesnar staring down each other the week before WrestleMania? <laughs> oh, this main event's going to be fun. And not in a good way. Why well, show people why well, I am, am the new face of fear? Why well, go out to the ring and wrestle a match to show how dominant I can be? That would only make sense for my character to do such a thing. My character is facing The Undertaker, one of the greatest performers in WrestleMania history. But instead of my character doing anything productive, my character will cut the same methodical Boring ass promos. I'll keep on doing these promos. It doesn't matter if it's in the rain or up the ramp or backstage in my cauldron. It doesn't matter because I'm the new face of fear. And I'll keep saying it time after time again. And then I'll keep saying, Undertaker, that you're a shell of your former self. And then at WrestleMania, Undertaker, I'm going to job to you just like I job to everyone else. I feel like the icy title ladder match is on like copy and paste. It's like, okay, insert these people in a match and then these people are going to interfere and it'll just be a clusterfuck at the end. Yeah, I'm not excited for the build of this icy title ladder match. And here's the reason why. I mean, let, let's look at this here. The best built guy entering this icy title ladder match is our troop. Not Daniel Bryan, who main evented WrestleMania 30 last year. Not Dolph Ziggler, who was the sole survivor of the Survivor Series main event last year. Not Dean Ambrose, who was one of the hottest superstars last year. Not Luke Harper, a young talent. Not Bad News Bear coming off an injury. Not Stardust, a former Intercontinental Champion. But the 40-plus-year-old R-fucking-Truth. Ah, I'm a huge R-Truth fan. I like this guy. I think he's funny on the microphone, very entertaining. But it's sad. Heading into WrestleMania, the list of names that I just named, and the main focus, and the main dude, and the most entertaining guy in this whole feud is R-Fucking-Truth. Alrighty then, it's time to talk about what this Raw was built about. And this was built about the best feud heading into WrestleMania, Randall Keith Orton taking on Seth Rollins. You know what's funny is everyone hates this feud. I'm like one of the only few people who like this feud. I think this is the most well-built feud heading into WrestleMania, and it's the most entertaining feud heading into WrestleMania. If there's one thing I am excited for about WrestleMania this year, it's Randy Orton and Seth Rollins. Now, was the storyline tonight very predictable? Oh, hell yeah. This shit was so fucking predictable. You know, you have, it was so predictable once they announced the main event of the night, when they said, oh, it's Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins, and then you had all these vignettes being shoved down your throats, all the authorities giving up on Seth Rollins, you just knew in the back of your head, no, they haven't, they're going to come out during the main event, some screwy shit is going on here tonight, and especially if you read the dirt sheet reports ahead of time, you knew that something big was going to happen with one individual, so when the main event rolled around tonight, I knew that there was not going to be a match between Randy Orton and Seth Rollins. I knew the WWE would be smart and save these two for WrestleMania. This is one of the only things they're doing right right now is this Randy Orton and Seth Rollins feud. In my personal opinion, you can disagree with that. I have no problem with that because I can understand why some people are not a fan of this Randy Orton and Seth Rollins feud. I am just a fan of it because I think the WWE has been doing a pretty swell job with the booking and that's all I really ask for for the WWE nowadays. I mean, it's not the most entertaining feud of all time, but out of all the rest of these WrestleMania feuds going on, it, it's clearly my favorite. But pretty much when Seth Rollins and the Authority was walking down the ramp, and especially when you knew Triple H was walking down the ramp, when you saw Triple H walk down, you knew, oh shit, here comes Sting. And that was the best part of Raw this week, was seeing my boy, Randall Keith Orton, teaming up with the icon, woo, or I'm sorry, the Vigilante, woo, Sting. And let me just tell you, Sting, whew, 
He looks in great shape tonight, man. Mm, that was like the best looking Sting that I've seen since, you know, his TNA debut. That's a long time ago if you think about it. So, dang, Sting is really working hard for this match against Triple H. That's for damn sure. But but it, it's kind of sad to me that I have to sit through this long, boring, dull show just to get to this. Th this was the, the highlight of the show, was just the ending. And it's not like because this highlight featured, you know, young superstars for the future. And it's not like this highlight was featuring, you know, pretty much... Roman Reigns, the cockpit, taking on Brock Lesnar. No, no, no. It was featuring Sting, who we barely see on WWE TV, and Randy Orton. Does anyone else kind of sit there and kind of say to yourself, yeah, this was pretty awesome seeing Sting, but at the same time you're saying to yourself, like, shit, man. We have to keep on going to the nostalgia acts. They can't have current stars be that exciting. And when they do have current stars that can be exciting... It seems like the WWE likes to force them in stupid ladder matches. <laughs> I loved the ending to this Raw, even though it kind of did piss me off that it didn't feature younger talent. I didn't care, really, to be honest. Sting showing up was cool. Randy Orton and Seth Rollins being the most entertaining feud to me is cool. And this was the right way to end Raw tonight. Overall, this Raw has felt like many other Raws on the road to WrestleMania. Really, really forgettable. That's how it really feels. I feel like most Raws heading into WrestleMania this year have just been like, oh, there's that one, maybe two moments that you remember from the episode. But other than that, the rest of the episode, just skippable. You don't have to watch. You can just watch the video packages before the matches themselves to get you hype up WrestleMania. There's people on YouTube who do a better job with their, you know, created video packages than the WWE with their three-hour show. So in all honesty, this Raw was skippable, forgettable, minus the main event. So just watch that, people. Anyways, guys, what did you guys think about this week's episode of Raw? Comment down below your thoughts on this week's show. Give this video a big old thumbs up if you guys like to. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at ChaseAuber68. I'll see you all next time. Peace.